Now, in order for me to replicate a very deadly and lethal primitive hunting arrow, there's a few items and tools, both primitive and modern, that I like to use in order to complete the task at hand. And I want to go over these right now. Just keep in mind, while doing so, I actually process most of this stuff off camera and off set in order to cut down on film time. So the first things we have are my arrow shaft and my arrow four shaft. I went over this in the introduction part of this series. I have my stone point that I'm going to mount on the fore shaft. This is an Ishi style point. You can see this is nice and thin. It's very symmetrical. It's sharp on the tip. It's very jagged on the sides. So I'm fully confident that this thing will pierce through any animal's hide in America. And I got to thank my friend Tony Soares for chipping me out that point. The next thing I have is whitetail backstrap sinew that I'll be using in this video. I have tight bond liquid hide glue. I have some artificial sinew that I'll use from time to time. Thin sewing thread. This will come in extremely handy with the fletching process and I'll go over that again later on in the series. I have my Swiss multi-tool. Three turkey feathers identical in size and length. I actually processed these this morning. I have my burnishing tool. This is a mule deer antler tine. And the most important item and the most important tool, in my opinion, is my hunting bow. This wooden primitive bow is 40 pounds at 28 inches. Now what I need to do is I need to start preparing my shaft as well as my fore shaft. And I'm gonna probably end up shrinking this in size with my little saw. But to prepare these shafts, what I need to do is burnish the wood once again using this antler tine. See what happened is when we scraped this outer bark off and we went down into the cambium layer and then sanded this smooth, these grains are still loose. So what the burnishing does is it compacts this wood and makes it hard again. And that's what we want to do. Now remember, mule fat is not a hard wood. So it's not, when I, when I say hard, it means it's taking those grains and it's compacting them nice and tight. It's not turning this into a hard wood. And all I do is I run my antler tine throughout the entire shaft and you can feel it. When you do this process, you can actually feel the antler tine gripping the wood and eventually it'll feel real smooth and real slick. So once again, I'm just taking my antler tine and I'm just running it along the whole shaft. I'm getting that grain nice and tight, nice and compact. And that's going to help add strength to this shaft as well as the fore shaft. And a way to tell some of the spots you're missing and some of the spots you're hitting is look at it in the sunlight. You can actually see the part you're burnishing. It turns slick. And we missed a few spots already. So I usually go over this three or four times. Again, I'll look at it and I'm seeing I missed a few spots, even up in here. I remember on my first arrow making class, um, there was a, a whole group of students. And by the time they started cutting their knocks into the arrow shafts, I was still burnishing the wood. And they say I move at a snail's pace, but you know what? That's a good thing. That's a good thing. We wanna do this right. And we wanna make sure that these arrows are long lasting and taking your time and working out all the little kinks is, uh, is the proper way to do it. Remember, we don't want to rush through this. You know, this arrow series, it's probably going to be uh, a few different episodes. We'll probably have a three, four part series, if not more. And that's because I take my time. I work out all the little imperfections to, uh, to replicate a good hunting arrow. Again, so I'll take it up right towards that sun. 
and we're looking good there got a few more spots I'll flip it around now towards the bottom I won't burnish and the reason I don't burnish that is because we are going to lay our sinew down there which I'll show you in just a second so I kind of leave that blank it's already sanded and uh, and again we want to we want to leave that blank because that sinew has to grab a surface want that sinew to really grab the wood and and bite down tight once it dries okay so this is good that's uh that's nice and burnished you can feel that antler tine actually gets warm it grips that wood nice and tight and now for the foreshaft and again I'm gonna put it up to the light I definitely see I'm missing a lot of spots it puts a nice sheen on the wood Even this harder, dense wood, you can actually feel it grabbing. It's not only the soft woods. You can feel that antler tine just gripping into the wood. And again, we're condensing these, uh, this grain. We're making it nice and solid, nice and compact. And this is going to add a lot of strength to these shafts. And not only that, it puts, like I said, a really nice glossy sheen to it. And if you don't have an antler tine or you're just working on this stuff at home, which to be honest with you, 90% of my arrows do come from home. Um, I uh, very rarely I'll make them out here in the field. Uh, the only time I'll do so is, is if I'm making an educational instructional video. But uh, you know, I like, to, I like to work on them at home. Of course, I gather the materials in the field. But uh, if you're working at home, or if, even if you're out in the field, you'll always find trash. Uh, and if you can find a, a bottle, a beer bottle or a Coke bottle, it'll do the same thing. You take that round part of the bottle and you just start burnishing the wood and, uh, and it does quite well. But I find that the antler, you know, the natural properties in the tine, you know, it. Uh, it works well enough for me and it's uh, more of the naturalist route. So whatever way you decide to uh, to go and whatever method you decide to use, it should be fine. Okay, got a few more sections right through here. All right, that's looking good. It's looking really good. Excellent. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'll just set this to the side. And I have it on a stone, so once again, my shafts are not on the ground. They're not getting dirty and full of, uh, full of grit. And at this point, I am going to start, uh, start removing some material up top with my wood file or some folks will use this as a metal file and I'll just take I'll just take my knife here and I'll start carving out the start of my knock and I'll just start biting into the wood real slow just on the sides and this is just placing a seat for the file All right, so just like that, now I'm gonna move over to the metal file and I'm gonna start shaping this out. And again, I like to go real slow. I just like to drag the file down a few times. And if I need to bite into that wood more, I can do so with my knife to create 
a, uh, a more drastic uh, seat to it. But this should be good, and I just go slow again. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. And uh, some folks will even use a rat tail file for this entire process. Uh, but what I find is the rat tail file I'll use at the very bottom of the knock. And I can do that a little bit later on into the arrow making process. That just adds a little bit of character to the knock. Um, but with that rat tail file, if I use it completely through, I find sometimes being it's so wide, it can start biting in to the corners of this wood and I don't want that. So I usually use my square file and then, like I said, I'll just round that little bit off on each side. And uh, that's once again, more of a personal preference. You can do that or, or just leave it square. Either one will work. This knock is, uh, is fairly thin. I'm gonna be stringing this arrow up to a B50, or sorry, a fast flight string. If I was using a 12 strand B50, I'd wanna go a little bit wider. But this should be about good right here. And right now, I'm going to start taking off these edges of the knock, and I'm going to start rounding the tips. Again, what this is doing is it's adding a little bit of character to it. It's, uh, it's, it's not creating such a, a harsh square surface. We're doing a nice rounded surface that kind of blends in with the, with the rest of the shaft. But it also allows me to pinch the knock if I decide to shoot that way. And when you do this, just go slow. There is no rush with this. You wanna take your time, inspect everything every few minutes, make sure everything's going okay, and uh, make sure everything's nice and even. So again, I'm just taking off these corners, I'm rounding the top, and I'm going to get a, a nice character to this knock.